Welcome back to another Electronics and More video. Not too long ago, Grant Thompson uploaded a very good video to his channel which showed flammability tests using liquid propane. If you haven't seen that video, I placed a link in the video description area, so be sure to check it out. For the tests shown in his video, he took a small propane cylinder, like you see right over here, and using a modified brass propane torch head, similar to this one, he drained the liquid propane from the cylinder into a glass bowl. Now unfortunately, when using that particular method, he had to cut and drill out the propane torch head in order to be able to get a reasonable amount of propane, or liquid propane, to flow from the cylinder. As a result, the torch head was no longer usable. In this video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to quickly remove liquid propane from the cylinder and without having to destroy anything in the process. Now before I get started, I'd like to go over a few things first. The propane inside the cylinder is able to remain a liquid due to the vapor pressure above. And what that does, it puts pressure on that liquid, preventing it from boiling and producing more gas. Now, depending on temperature, the higher the temperature goes, the higher the vapor pressure is going to be. It's going to take a lot more pressure acting on that liquid to keep it from boiling and turning into a gas. And at lower temperatures, you're going to require very little pressure in order to keep that liquid from boiling. Propane has a boiling point of around minus 44 degrees Fahrenheit, which means if you're in Alaska in the winter and it happens to be minus 40 degrees out, you'll be able to remove the valve core from the top of this propane cylinder and no gas should escape. And the reason is because it's so cold, the pressure inside will be very close to zero PSI. At zero degrees Fahrenheit, the pressure inside the cylinder would be right around 24 PSI, which is still very low. At 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the vapor pressure is going to be around 172 pounds per square inch. And at room temperature around 70 degrees, you're looking at around 110 PSI. These cylinders are normally filled to about 80% capacity and the reason for that is because you want to allow for expansion. If it gets very hot, you may have this in the trunk of a vehicle if you just went shopping on a hot day. So you want to allow for expansion and contraction. The good thing about propane gas, you could use it down to very low temperatures. So if it happens to be 10 degrees outside or just below zero, you're still going to have the liquid inside the cylinder giving off gas so you're able to use it. If you were using butane instead of propane, butane has a much higher temperature boiling point of around 33 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're outside and it's 10 or 20 degrees outside, you're just going to have a cylinder full of liquid with no usable gas. So that's the good thing about propane. And you can also use isobutane, which has a boiling point of around 11 degrees Fahrenheit if there's conditions where you could not normally use butane. Now in order to get the liquid out of this cylinder, we're going to have to do, it's very simple, on the top of the cylinder over here, there's a Schrader valve. You're going to need a tool right over here. It's a valve core tool and it's designed to fit right inside the top very easily. And right there it's locked into the valve. You can use this on your tires of your vehicle as well and many other kinds of valves including refrigeration. You're going to need a container, a large one, like you see right here. This is what we're going to be placing the liquid propane inside this container. And it's also a very good idea to be wearing gloves as well as a face shield in the event any propane liquid splashes back towards your body. So as I stated earlier, if we were able to cut this cylinder open and leave the liquid inside and not have it vaporize, the temperature would have to be right around minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So what we're going to have to do is we need to get the pressure much, much lower on this valve core before we're able to remove it and then invert the cylinder into the container and allow the gas above or the vapor pressure above to increase and what's going to happen it's going to push the liquid below 
out this opening into the container where you can collect it. In order to do that, you're going to take this cylinder and you're going to place it in your freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. You want this whole thing to cool way down. If you happen to have a sub-zero freezer, you're going to be better off because it's going to get that pressure down to right around 20 PSI. Now in the past, I was able to remove this when it was down around 20 PSI. Just put the valve in, and as soon as you unscrew it, it's going to pop out, and I just turn it upside down. All the liquid refrigerant shoots out into the container where you can collect it. But I want to have this even lower to the point where I push the Schrader valve in before I go to unscrew it, that very little, if any, pressure comes out. I'm going to take a block of dry ice, and I'm going to put it in a bag crushed up, placed all around the cylinder. After I let that sit for a few minutes in a well-insulated bag, I'll push the valve core in to see what kind of pressure we have. And when it's extremely, extremely low, then I'm going to remove the valve core and we're going to dump out the liquid propane. Okay, inside this bag right here is a bunch of dry ice inside of a small insulated pouch. And inside that pouch with the dry ice, I have the cylinder that's been sitting for about 15 minutes. Got a hole in that. You could hear the dry ice against the cylinder making that noise. Let's take a look at this right here. All right. Okay. Lift this right here carefully. When I push it in, no pressure. So it's just liquid inside the cylinder. Very carefully, remove the valve core. All right, so if we invert this, what's going to happen, you're going to have liquid propane coming out. See it? All right. The next step, I'm going to, because this is too cold, you need the pressure to build in the vapor area which is going to push the liquid out the bottom. So what I'm going to do is remove it from this pouch with the dry ice, hold it with a cloth. It's gradually going to warm up. As it does, pressure will increase, forcing the liquid propane into the container. All the liquid propane is coming out. And it's going to get more and more pressure as this area heats up. cylinder is still extremely cold. Pressure is gradually increasing. It's getting much lighter. The 
course, do not do this anywhere where you have static electricity or sparks. And there you go, it's empty. And right here, you are looking at liquid propane. So let's zoom on in. This liquid propane will continue to become a gas until all the liquid has disappeared. Let's throw in a good old peep. Let the peep go for a swim. right around minus 40. The peep has to be frozen solid right now. Let me remove it. Move this to the side. And hit it with a hammer. Not totally hard. The middle, the outer shell is hard as a rock, but the inside is still a little bit soft. Let's take this plant and shove it in there. Let's take this out. falls apart like plastic. Take the flower. Let that sit. Take the flower out and see how it acts. Should be able to grab it, hopefully. Okay. Just like glass. And you can see about half of this is now boiled away. Now you know how to remove liquid propane from a cylinder using only about $2 worth of crushed dry ice. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.